at Momentum, we know that success breeds success. So we are proud to help build the momentum of every woman's journey to success. We call it Momentum. Because the momentum you generate is formidable. And when we join forces, our momentum is unstoppable. Momentum, here for every woman's journey to success. Hi, I'm Tata Moaghi and I'm a farmer all the way from Limpopo and I've recently started farming in Cape Town, actually. Hello, my name is Akona Makalima. I am a FIFA referee. I started refereeing about 10 years ago. And since there's been a lockdown, what challenges have you faced in your personal career because of, you know, lockdown restrictions? So during lockdown, obviously, we didn't want to have a lot of jobs because it was like complete lockdown. Remember, football put food in my table. So when football was out, yeah, it was very difficult to put food in the table. But because we, 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 we have to save and all of that, we also have to do other things. It was lucky for me. I was lucky because uh, I told you earlier on that I also have a, a smoothie bar. So at that time I was training. So when I was training, I was also sharing all the, um, the recipes, the smoothies to other people, my recipes, and people now would still order. I, I would um, like deliver smoothies, like diet plans to other people in my, in my area. So I've made a little bit of my money with the smoothie bar, even though I didn't want to do the smoothie bar at that particular time, but COVID forced me to do it, but I managed. And also, I think I was, I was almost getting to depression to be in the house all the time. I'm used to traveling. I'm used to be out. And now I have to sit home. And the first 21 days, was, they were just a disaster. For me, I felt like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do next? Am I going to be... I remember running 10 kilometers inside the house. Like I opened all the gates and then I ran 10 kilometers around the house. So, but we are here now. Tato, tell me. What lessons have you learned from being part of the 2020 Momentum, uh, so Women Term Tribe? Well, I think after being in the space with all those amazing women and their stories, I felt that there's so much more that I can do. So since last year, I've been busy. You know, lockdown, like you said, sort of gives you the time to do things. Even though I'm in agriculture, it didn't really stop. Yeah. I decided, let me expand on my business. So I decided to be a bit more aggressive on how I operate. Um, I, did the le I made a leap to make sure that I can um, try grasp opportunities that are available. Hence why I started farming in, in the Western Cape, because I saw that you know, there's opportunities for fresh produce to be made in Western Cape. But also the campaign also made me realize there's no upper limit, you just, like yes. you just said, you don't keep on achieving yes. things, you know. And I've been busy um, developing an app mm. and I realized how, what, what made me develop this app is I realized that, okay, fine, farmers, we still need to operate in this lockdown setting. And I realized that, you know, the auctions were closed. Farmers couldn't go take the animals to auction. So I decided to then um, develop an app. Um, it's an online auction platform where farmers can sell their livestock um, online and a buyer can be able to get it delivered to their house, just like Uber Eats. Um, so I've been spending the past uh, year working with MTN on that project. And that really has been um, something different because not only am I a farmer or an entrepreneur, now I'm going into, you know, that's in, into technology and um, I'm really trying to create solutions for other people, you know, just solving my issues. I had an issue. I saw that I couldn't sell my animals because there was no auctions and I decided to, you know, you know, solve that problem. And I know that other people had similar issues. So I hope that, um, you know, it just gave me inspiration to just keep on doing more. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, what response did you get from after doing the campaign? You know, um, I think I must really thank Momentum for putting me out there, for recognizing what I do and what I stand for. Because when, 
number one, I was very shocked when I received a call from Momentum. Really, am I doing something? And then after that, people were now responding to, oh, wow, we didn't know that there is a female like this. So when they read, when they were reading the, the, um, the profile and everything and how M Momentum was putting every, every, every experience that I, that I go through and the profile, people were like, oh my goodness, we really love what you do. And I got few of opportunities through Momentum. So I got, I get a lot of exposure. I got to be booked through Momentum because other people will say, we saw you on the Momentum ad. So what were you doing with them? Or maybe I post the picture, what were you doing with Momentum? And then I'll start experiencing. So I really thank Momentum for, for sharing our stories, our amazing stories, and to continue um, being unstoppable and also to not being apologetic to own our own successes. You know, so I'm very happy with that. So tell me, what have you achieved in your career since this time last year? Well, I think the, the major thing, like I explained earlier, was to just really expand on, my, on production, mm. um, stamping my authority in that. I was, very, when I was very passionate to say that I need to expand on my scope. Um, and then developing my app was also one of the things that I can say. But I think one thing that I have learned in the past year is to really guard yourself and your career. There are a lot of because you you are unique and you are different in what you do. There's going to be people that are going to jump on that and want to use you for all of that. So I've learned that you know what in life, um, the more open we are, we open ourselves to good things yes. like you explained opportunities, but there's also bad things. And I also wanted to I've shared through my social media um, my experiences, mm -hmm. you know of. Um, uh, people trying to use my name or my image for their own purposes, be it for economic or political and all of that, you know. Um, and that's something that I, I, when I mentor young girls to say, you know, you, you just spoke about the tough skin, uh, mm. tough skin, switching off the negative noise. I think that's been one of the major things that I've developed in my career in the past year is really getting that tough skin switching off the negative noise and, and really trying to just focus on the work, you know, less on the publicity and all yes. of that, just the hard work, just carrying on. Um, so for me, what I would like to ask is, you know, the theme for this uh, season is I'm unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Um, how do you feel that? How do you embody that? As, I mean, you're an athlete, so I can just imagine you probably every morning you just... Listen, you know what, the beginning of this year, in fact, the beginning of each year, the beginning of each season, I always write my goals. That you know what, I'm coming for this. I don't care how it is difficult to attain it or to get it, but I am going for it because nobody's going to stop me. So when I saw the theme, Unstoppable, I was like, yes, darling, you are talking to me. I am going for each and everything that I want. And if I put my mind into it, nobody's going to stop me. Bring it on. I don't care how hard you think it is to attain it. And I will keep rising. I keep rising like a day. I keep rising. It doesn't matter. It is difficult. I am going to find ways to be to, to, to conquer it. So I am really unstoppable. I know I had hurdles throughout the, uh, the previous years, but I, I rose above that. And I am I really, really unstoppable. And I'm switching down all the volumes of negativity. I am focused. Nobody is going to stop me. So, <laughs> I mean, who keeps you inspired or what inspires you to keep going? Because, I mean, your industry, it's, it's tough. You need to have the, the mental strength, the physical strength as well. I mean, how do you just keep on doing it? You know what? I surround myself with a lot of powerful and executive women, uh, not only in sports, but if I see that, like yourself, you really inspire me a lot and I surround myself with people like you because I get inspired. I get motivation from people like you and say, if Tato can do this, you see how powerful Tato is. And then I get closer. I learn a, a thing or two from you while you are also learning from me. And also my family, I get my family inspires me a lot. When I look back, I feel like if I cannot do it for myself, I'm doing it for the next girl 
who is my sister. And if I cannot inspire my family, my girls, my community, I can never inspire any other, any other girls from any other provinces or the, uh, outside of South Africa. So all the times I get inspiration from my, from, my, from my family. And also when I look at how hard my mother worked, so I always look at those things and say, it doesn't matter. I now have a, what I call the no matter what mentality. It doesn't matter if it, it, it's raining, I'm going to do it. No matter who says what, no matter it's, it's storming, it's sunshine comes, I'm going to rain and I'm going to be unstoppable. That's very powerful, Akona. But what about you? Tell me, what does it take to attain unstoppable success? <laughs> <sighs> Literally waking up every day and deciding, you know, what I want to achieve. Yeah. I mean, you, you touched on it quite well to say setting goals for yourself um, and attainable goals. I know some people have vision boards yeah. or they have diaries and, you know, I keep a, a notebook and every day my husband actually forces me to write to this notebook every day just to do what am I planning to do, um, what is my vision, but also just you know, having that existential view on life and constantly noting it and then reflecting back, you know, and then I'll go through my notebook and say, okay, fine, in March, what was, it, what was my thinking? Mm. What was my mentality at that stage? Where am I now? So constantly checking in on yourself. Um, and also think another thing is mental, having, looking after your mental health. That's very I think true. a lot of people don't, talk about that to say you need to be as much as you use physical and you spiritual you still have to look at your, your mental health and always check in I mean you, you do touch on another corner to say you need your rest yes. I mean yes I mean there's so much that needs to happen you need your rest you need to check in on yourself you need to you know be constantly aware of you know your influences your surroundings for me I'm, I'm a homely person mm. I love it when it's just myself my husband and the baby, we, we, we together, we all the time, we together all the time. We do things together. I never leave my baby anyway. I, I always go with her. But that is what is helping me, you know, a, a constant reminder of when, what type of legacy I want to leave behind, what type of work ethic I want to instill in my children. Um, and when other people see how I do things, then they can also you know, reflect on that. Mm, well, you know what, uh, what, I, what, I, what I like from what you just said, the mental health, the mental health, because like at the, um, at the Olympics now, you know, Simone, Simone Biles, she just said, no, I'm not going to compete guys, because I feel like mentally I am not there. I need my mental strength. So mental health is very important because sometimes we go, we are, life is very busy. We run busy lives. We are very busy. We, it's just hectic, let me just put it like that. And then we forget ourselves. It doesn't matter you are successful in your own field or how people are looking up on you and you even forget about yourself. So it is very important to never forget about yourself. Sometimes you just take some time off and say, you know what, I'm out of social media. I just need my me time so that I can just recharge and face the world. Please tell us, Tado, what is the most inspirational quote you have learned that you have that you can share so that women can own their success? Just one quote. A quote? Well, um, I always will remember what my great-grandmother used to say. So my great-grandmother lived in Zanin, which is in Limpopo province, um, beautiful lush land. And she, I mean, I remember being with her when she was in the late 90s and she'd wake up every day and take a plow mm. and plow and we always used to ask her my gogo like aren't you tired like you should be resting let's pour you some coke you know biscuits just relax and she would always say if i don't do it who will mm. and for me that's always resonated in my life to say that if i don't do it who will you know and that's why it was never a hard thing to go into this industry because I saw the opportunities, economic opportunities for myself, but also for my community. And I thought, if I don't do it, who's going to plug the gap? I love it. I need to go in. So that's something that I will always remember um, and something that's always kept me going to say that even if I have challenges to say, here's something that I'm facing, mm. I have an issue and I'm struggling. I can't just shy away from it and say, you know what, this is beyond my capacity. You know, 
reach out to people, ask questions, figure it out somehow, but mm. just don't shy away from the problems because if you take a step back, then it's literally who's going to fill that gap that you're just exiting from. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing culturally, but...